Klaatu Barada Nikto. Elon Musk is one of the most powerful people in the world right now. He is the richest human on the planet. A willingness to publicly engage and huge entrepreneurial success have created a billionaire celebrity with fans and detractors alike. Here, in brief, is at least some of his story and myth. We will start with a quote from Musk's father about Musk's childhood. We had so much money at times, we couldn't close our safe. Relatable. Musk was born in South Africa. His mother was a model and his father was, amongst other things, a pilot and entrepreneur. Throughout the 70s, Elon's father, Errol, built his wealth with real estate deals and large engineering contracts, building things like office buildings and residential neighborhoods. At one time, the family lived in one of Pretoria's biggest houses. According to Elon, neither parent spent a great deal of time with their children, and he received little adult guidance. In 1979, Errol and May divorced, and Elon, then eight, chose to live with his father. This, he says, was a mistake. Numerous family members accuse Errol of emotional and physical abuse, and he is often painted as ruthless and cold. In a 2017 Rolling Stone interview, Musk said of his father, My dad will have a carefully thought out plan of evil. He will plan evil. In the mid-1980s, Errol Musk bought a 50% stake in an emerald mine in Zambia, according to him, although there is little to corroborate that there really was a mine, or that it was in Zambia, or that it was mining emeralds. By his own account, he made a lot of money from this emerald mine, and all the other pies he had thumbed but exact figures on Errol's worth are currently beyond my field of view. Musk's father's wealth and his own childhood privilege doesn't really matter to who Elon Musk, the person, is right now, as much as the contention surrounding it. Was he born rich? Is he really self-made? That these questions are important to Musk is really more interesting to me than the questions themselves. Again in Rolling Stone, Musk says that he moved to Canada at 17, and later obtained passports for his mother, brother, and sister to join him there. He says that his father paid nothing for his college, and that he paid his own way with scholarships, loans, and by working. Of Zip2, the company that propelled Musk and his brother, Kimball, into financial orbit, Musk laments that his father has erroneously claimed that he gave the Musk boys some money toward its beginnings. This is not true, he says. He later clarified, I mean sort of, it is a tweet, that his dad did have financial interests in the company at some point. Zip2 was a private company that was bought out by Compaq in 1999. It's difficult to say what the truth is. It's interesting that in 2019, again via the incredible medium of Twitter, Musk said his father never owned an emerald mine. Online, there are still arguments about whether the emerald mine thing is real or not. Well, there's a 2009 New Yorker piece that mentions it, and a 2014 Ask Men interview with Elon Musk the pertinent part of which I could only get to via the Wayback Machine, where Elon Musk says, My dad used to own an emerald mine. The emerald mine isn't what interests me here. Yeah, his dad was rich, and growing up, Musk was very privileged. But what really interests me is that Musk is so concerned with his own narrative and myth to the point of contradicting himself. Interesting. 
but we'll come back to that in a bit. Zip2 was a company founded by Elon and Kimball Musk and Greg Curry in 1995. It began by providing internet services for local businesses and later licensed city guides for local newspapers. Of this time, Musk later said this. Uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. They sold it to Compaq in 1999 and Musk made $22 million from his shares. That year, Musk co-founded X.com, an online bank, funding it with Greg Corey. In March of 2000, X.com merged with Cofinity, a competitor founded a year before X.com by, among others, billionaire Bilderberg enthusiast Peter Thiel. Together, the two companies became PayPal, named after Cofinity's core money transfer service. PayPal went public and was shortly after bought by eBay in 2002 for one and a half billion dollars, personally netting Musk 175 million dollars. In 2002, Musk founded SpaceX, an aerospace manufacturing company that today is controlled by the Elon Musk Trust. In 2004, he invested six and a half million dollars into Tesla, becoming its largest shareholder and chairman. And in 2008, he became CEO, which he remains. He's the owner of Neuralink, a company developing brain implants that could be like a Fitbit inside your skull, according to Musk. He's also the owner of The Boring Company, a tunneling company that can build small tunnels under things, and is ready and waiting for the nation's embrace of the VAC train. Now, with a number of relationships with other famous people under his belt, his celebrity is assured. And in a way, that sort of catches you up. He is an industrialist and an investor. He is often presented as a sort of capitalist da Vinci. The Musk myth has him as a hard-working genius and dude. But a lot of that, I think probably most of that, really comes from him. And really shows us what he wishes he was. And he may be those things, but he wishes he was. Throughout the years, Musk has built himself a public persona of a candid entrepreneur, where his work is more important than his wealth. On April the 2nd of 2018, he tweeted that he was sleeping on the factory floor, and a week and a bit later, he told Gale directly, and in July, he told Bloomberg, in the same breath as explaining how much he cares about the people at Tesla. Maybe Elon Musk did indeed sleep on his couch in his factory during Tesla production delays, but I'm sure he wanted us to know that. He also made these claims in 2016 to The Motley Fool. To really get to the wick of this, this guy knows what to say and mostly when and how to say it, but he believes none of it. Gonna sue me for that? If he did, Tesla wouldn't have forced factory workers to sleep on the factory floor by the machinery in Shanghai in 2022. This wasn't a choice that they had, they were forced. Imagine if this happened at the Texas plant. Musk trumpets himself as a defender of free speech, an absolutist even, to the point of preferring to carry Russian propaganda over his Starlink internet service network than not. But on June the 4th, 2018, when Business Insider quoted an anonymous leak from within Tesla, who claimed the company was creating an enormous amount of inefficient, costly, and dangerous waste, Musk worked hard not just to find, but silence the leaker. This leaker was a man called Martin Tripp, who claims he leaked specific information about Tesla's waste out of health and safety concerns. Tesla had private investigators follow him and forensically examine his computer. 
And we know this because Sean Guthrow, who was a security manager at Tesla's Gigafactory, has since himself turned whistleblower. He claims that Tesla was monitoring its workers' private communications and acted well beyond anything close to legal. As for Tripp, on June the 19th, he was fired, and on the 20th, Tesla sued him for $167 million. They also tried to say, completely baselessly, that the journalist who broke the Tripp story had taken bribes. Then, Tesla received a tip that Tripp might show up and shoot up the place, but the sheriff had to drop things when Tesla refused to cooperate further. The sheriff even claimed to Bloomberg that on finding out the shooter tip was false, the company asked him to hype it up anyway. It certainly looks as though there was a concerted effort to punish Tripp and terrify any other would-be leakers, and that would have come from Musk. Perhaps also, a free speech absolutist shouldn't fire people who disagree with them, a claim that is laid out across many quarters, but especially in the book Power Play. Musk, the book claims, fired Kate Pearson, the executive in charge of delivery operations, for saying it wasn't feasible to hit a particular delivery goal. An earlier article in Wired says Musk would regularly fire people at will, with little cause, in fits of rage. You know, rage, the closest emotion to the scientific method. Musk has said in court that he does not rage fire people, but rather gives them clear and frank feedback, which may be construed as derision. I give my honest opinion in a way that may be interpreted as vociferous disdain. Musk isn't Richard Sackler, but I think he probably is as disingenuous. For example, he said many times how Tesla, which is where the bulk of his interests lie, is incredibly important to the future of the world. He has touted his own environmental efforts numerous times, but he knows that although Tesla products run on electricity, which is definitely better than petrol, they are not anything close to green. One battery takes about 13 kilograms of lithium and cobalt. Lithium mining is especially environmentally destructive. In 2019, Tesla and other industrial corporations were sued by 14 Congolese families for purchasing things like cobalt from mines that used children, children as young as six. Mines where children as young as six are frequently injured and frequently die. In 2021, that was dismissed because, and get this, these companies merely participated in the global cobalt supply chain, and more critically, for the suit to succeed, the families would need to show that they had been forced to work in such mines through threat of violence. Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, it says on its own website. Not make as much money as possible, and possibly have some PR about greenery after that. That's why it opened a new massive factory in China, where more than 50% of electricity is produced by coal. Tesla's sprawling Berlin factory that it is currently developing has been fast-tracked into existence at the expense of the local environment and labour standards. It's not like Tesla is the only household name doing these things. Really, they're all the same. Nodding along, saying that they care about the environment, but doing the bare legal minimum. Because legally, they are obliged to suck profit out of everything for their shareholders until the water is up to their own bottom lip. I mean, if Tesla really was going to try and save the environment, if that was its real number one mission, wouldn't the shareholders have a problem with that? We invested for the money, Elon. Don't worry, I was lying. Good. Tesla and Musk are not the same thing, but they are not entirely untangleable. Musk owns 17% of Tesla, and its stock price increase is largely behind Musk now taking the brown crown 
as the world's richest thing. In 2020, his net worth was about $27 billion. That peaked at about $300 billion in November 2021. I think Tesla's staggering valuation probably is thanks to Musk. They have a market cap equivalent to the next 10 automakers combined, but a third of the net income of just Ford. It's highly speculative, which Musk knows. He enjoys speculating himself, using his fame and reach on Twitter to manipulate stock prices of Tesla and other not very green but sort of futury sounding ventures, like Bitcoin. Can I make it any more clear that he's a hypocrite? He lambasts government subsidies, but his companies have received almost $5 billion of subsidies only up to 2015. In 2012, he signed the Giving Pledge, a wishy-washy charity promise that aims to make billionaires give their money away to good causes before they die. But now, Musk is using Tesla stock to buy Twitter, not cashing in on Tesla stock to, oh I don't know, fund a poverty program, or maybe help those children picking lithium out of the ground with their hands for his batteries. If you want to know, how really disingenuous this guy is. Listen to him talking to the Financial Times, to someone ostensibly a journalist, but who doesn't bother following this up. There's just, just a, a lot of super talented, hardworking people in China that are um, strongly believe in, in, in manufacturing, and and they will, they got, they'll, they won't just be burning the midnight oil, they'll be burning the 3 a.m. oil. <laughs> so. Um, they, they won't even leave the, leave the factory type of thing, whereas in America, people are trying to avoid going to work at all. <laughs> he knows that China is a communist autocracy, where the hard-working people, not the people he hangs out with at 3 a.m., but the people who are doing the actual work, do the work how, when, and where they are told, because they are basically slaves. You know who was hard-working? All those plantation workers. Damn, why can't we go back to those days? Why don't people work as hard as the people who are forced to work to death in China? That doesn't make any sense. Compared to the Chinese slaves, people in the US are lazy. As of mid-May 2022, Musk is trying to buy Twitter, which hasn't recorded a profit since 2019. He currently owns about 9% of it, and says that he plans to take it private. The branding of this acquisition revolves around Musk protecting free speech, which is about as sensical as trying to buy Mad Magazine to prevent anxiety. Musk's primary product is Musk. SpaceX, Boring, Neuralink may all do legitimate engineering stuff, and they may well be pushing the boundaries of their fields, but they're sideshows of Musk's. They're things for him to point at to say that he's a scientist and inventor, and that he's part of humanity's march forward, far more than what he really is, a capitalist through and through. Other plutocrats buy newspapers to be their mouthpieces and echo their hollow sentiments of freedom and liberty and democracy and other words that really don't mean anything tangible at all. So Twitter sort of seems like a good fit for Elon. I'm sure, under his guidance, it will become a bastion of sharing meaningful, original ideas and free expression. Time is like gravity. The only way is down. So there you have it, Elon Musk, working class hero. I don't think it's like Elon Musk is evil, just like I don't think that Zuckerberg or Bezos are evil. Unlike them, I think Musk is a bit better at reading the room and performing appropriately. But like them, I think deep down, he's primarily concerned with himself, with his own glory, fame, dynasty. So, there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter. Why wouldn't you? Because you're better than that. Also, there's nothing to discuss.
Thanks for watching. I'm also on YouTube, I guess. This is YouTube now. After they got rid of Rewind and everything. Yeah. It's all right. Fish sticks is over there. Be dead for a while. See you next time. Twitter. Facebook. Patreon.